I'm giving you that example that you may understand what we went through. That even in the worst of circumstances, even in the worst of afflictions, his salvation remains steadfast. Steadfast. And I thank God that I got saved during Idi Amin's time, 1976. Although I got saved when I was in Nairobi. But when I came back here and started working in the Department of Mathematics, I had hope. Idi Amin was not the end of my life. I did not have to look at him like now all of a sudden Idi Amin owns me because I belonged to another. I belong to the Father. And that's what Paul is talking about here. And let me now come down very quickly for you to understand the commitment that God has to you. That you have no reason not to give your life to Jesus. Because what Paul actually does in this passage that we read is that he shows us that the Father is committed to you. The Son is committed to you. The Holy Spirit is committed to you. Listen to what he says. In verse 33, he says, Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. You know, after you have justified someone, you don't condemn them, do you? And so Paul says at the beginning of that very chapter 8, and he says there is now no condemnation. No condemnation. For all those who are in Christ Jesus. Listen, friend. If you don't have Christ in your heart, you stand under the condemnation of God. And that's much worse than our own judiciary. And so, what the Bible is telling us, that the Father, the divine judge, is already biased for us. He's biased for me. <laughs> That's amazing. That makes me celebrate in my heart. That God is already... So, when the devil brings his evidence, God says, no case to answer. He just points to his son and he says, but do you realize what happened on the cross of Jesus? Now all I'm asking you, my dear friend, do you know that truth? Do you know that? Have you experienced what it means for God to say there is no condemnation over your head? <coughs> Many years ago, I remember I was driving behind a truck. And I saw something that I thought was such good gospel material here in Uganda. And at the back of the truck, and I'm sure there are others now who still have it, there was written these words, God's judgment, no appeal. That when God says you're righteous, when God says you're mine, when God saves you, there is no other court to be appealed to. Listen, here is the point that he's making. He's saying that when God saved me, no one can unsave me. Are we together? God who saved me is the final, the supreme court of all my life. He gave his son. And so the father is already biased toward us. But then not only that, he says even the son. The Bible says, will the son condemn us? No, 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 no. The son cannot condemn us. Listen to verse 34. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God? In fact, this Jesus cannot condemn you after he has shed his blood for you. You see, that's why we talk about a hope that is indestructible, that can never be changed. By his death, he paid the full ransom, the full price for your life, for your salvation. And now what does he do in heaven? The Bible tells us here that he actually intercedes for us, prays for us, goes to the Father and supports everything that we say. This is the Jesus we are talking, talking about. 
And all we are saying is give him your sins. And his salvation is sure. Because he has paid the price. None of us can ever pay that price. Coming to church does not pay the price. Being baptized does not pay the price. Being confirmed does not pay the price. Being good does not pay the price. It does not matter what you do. You can never buy your own life. If you think that you are doubting that, read Psalm 49, verses 7 to 9. No man can pay the price for another. You cannot even pay for yourself. But when you come to Jesus, he has paid the full price. That's why Paul can say, will Jesus condemn us? No, 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 no. The Father will not condemn you. The Son will not condemn you. What about the Holy Spirit? What will he do? Will the Holy Spirit condemn us? No, 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 no. no. Listen to that, those verses again. I read them for you, verse 26 and 27. The Spirit helps us. In our weakness, he helps us. In our afflictions, he helps us. In our hard afflictions, he helps us in our difficulties. As he has helped me over 46 years. You know, there are young people who say to themselves, but if I get saved, I may fall. Listen, the Bible is saying the Holy Spirit is he who will strengthen you and enable you to walk. And listen, all of us got saved because we are weak. None ever comes to Christ because you are strong. If you're strong, you can't do it for yourself, and of course you'll fail. But he's saying that the Holy Spirit himself is the one who strengthens us, makes us strong, and enables us. And not only that, he says that he intercedes for us, he prays for us also. So listen, before the Father, we have the Son praying for us, and we have the Holy Spirit praying for us, irrespective of the afflictions we may face. So I do not know about your life. God has said, you are mine. You should not waste your time going anywhere else. And so as he concludes those verses, let me now finish so that I can shut up. He says in verse 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Listen, what that actually means is that irrespective of what happens along the journey, irrespective of what hardships I may go through, I am on my way to heaven and I'm shouting victory. The question is, are you? What about you? Are you also on the way to heaven with me? That's why we preach the gospel, because we are telling everyone, do come and join us, because you see, everything has been paid. And God has, he says, you're mine. He has stamped me on the front, he has stamped me on the back, he has stamped me on the sides, and he says, you're mine. And that means you're never alone in your affliction. You're never alone. So he goes on and he says, If I am sure, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height, nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. 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 That the love that God has shown me in Christ, which John proclaimed and said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And now I want to turn it around and put in your name. And you say, for God loved me, John, loved me, 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 me. God loved me so much that he gave his only son. That's why Paul describes it in Romans chapter 5. And he says that it was at a time when we were weak. We couldn't do anything. It's at a time when we were sinners. It was at a time when we were ungodly. It's at a time when we were his enemies. And yet, for his enemies, God gave his son. Listen, if you've been walking and you're still walking without Christ, you're God's enemy. But still he says, I still love you. 
And he says, will you give your life to me? So that I can give you that indestructible hope that they are talking about. So that you can start a new journey, a journey in Christ that can never be lost. I'm going to give you opportunity now so that you can give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you're here. You came in here and you didn't know Jesus. You came in here, maybe at one time you were saved. But now you've not been walking with Jesus. I'm going to give you an opportunity. And this is how I'm going to do it, very simply. I'm going to pray a prayer. And I'm going to ask you that if you're willing to give your life to Jesus, repeat that prayer after me. Repeat it after me. And then after that, I'll pray another prayer for any and all that may have given their life to Jesus. Let us pray. So if you're willing to give your life to Jesus, pray this prayer. Even as I said, you're praying it to the Father, you're not praying it to me. You're saying, and in that prayer, you're going to be telling the Lord, I'm giving my life to you. And this is the prayer. Dear Father, thank you for speaking to my heart. And for showing me that my circumstances are not the end of my life. Forgive me when I have walked away from you. I have lived without you. You are inviting me into your secure hope. Lord, welcome me. I invite Jesus into my heart to be my Savior and my Lord. In his precious name I pray. Amen. Father, I want to thank you so much for this time and for the word that has gone forth. It is your word. And we, your unworthy servants, speak for you. Preaching a gospel that should be proclaimed by angels. Now you know that person who has said yes to you. And I'm asking you, Father, you save, you also keep. And you give the boldness to walk with you. I ask you now to give that person the boldness to confess you. And may your salvation be very real amongst us here. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, friends, I want to do just one little thing. I want to ask if any person has prayed that prayer. Just put up your hand and you say, yes, today I have invited Christ in my heart. Let's do this quickly. You say, yes. I've invited Christ in my heart. Yes, God bless you. you. Can see that hand? Any other person? Quickly. Just put up your hand. Quickly. Yes, God bless you. Any others? You say, yeah, I want to enter that hope that is indestructible. God bless you. Any other person? You say, I've invited Christ into my heart. Because, uh, yes, God bless you. Any more? Any other person you are inviting, it's the Christ, it's to Christ that you come for salvation. Is there someone else? Yeah? Any other person you say, yes, I've given my life, I've prayed that prayer, I've invited Christ into my heart. Any other person, please? Just do that. Okay? 
Now let me ask those of you who have put up your hands to stand up, please. Just stand up quickly. Just stand up wherever you are. Stand up, please. Very quickly, you prayed that prayer. You invited Christ in your heart. Now let me tell you why we do this. And it's a very, very important step. Stand up, stand up. Keep standing, keep standing. Don't sit down. Keep standing. You know you've prayed that prayer. Because you see, when you prayed that prayer, you were praying to God. I didn't hear it. You were praying to God the Father. But the Bible says for you to be saved, you need to believe and you need to confess. In other words, make public. But also Jesus said that there is great joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. So I don't want you to look at yourself as many people. I want you to look at yourself as I have given my life to Jesus. And in heaven, there is celebration. There is real celebration for you right many years ago i had an opportunity to go and preach in egypt and in egypt you couldn't even ask people to stand up because actually we had spies at the end but you are blessed and now i'm going to ask you to take one one more step and just walk over here walk over here i want to invite you here quickly let's do this quickly those of you who are standing just walk over here. We just want to welcome you. Because Jesus gives hope. Just walk over. Come on here. This Jesus is saying that I'm here to save. Please do come. This Jesus is amazing. And you're not coming to me. You're not coming to Reverend Onesmas or the clergy who are here. You're not coming to the bishop. You're coming to Jesus. And all I'm asking you is just step forward, that you step before the one who gives hope. The one who gives us a new life. The one who will never disappoint us. Keep coming, please. Keep coming. And if there is any person you did not stand up, you did not put up your hand. But you know the Holy Spirit is saying, but you did pray that prayer. You did not know Christ. Any person like that, you too can come. But we want to thank God for this. Because this is just the beginning. And the Holy Spirit is speaking. Yes, welcome, welcome. Someone else is coming. Welcome. You're welcome. Any other person? Just come. Just come. If you know that the Lord has spoken to you, and you're saying yes, Giving my life to Jesus. Just feel free to come. God bless you. God bless you. I know there are people here that God has spoken to and He's saying, You need to put right your life. I want to give you hope. I want to give you my salvation. Let me give one more opportunity and then I'll hand over. Yes, welcome, my dear. Any other person? Because God loves you, and his love never ceases, and he wants to save somebody you are here you, I kept hearing the preacher say I have I have the hope I know where I'm going now you are here you come to church you give tithes you are baptized you are, but you are not sure of where you are going you are not sure of that hope and you are here I want you to come and join 
if Jesus came today, do you know where you would go? Are you sure that you are saved? The preacher has said, when God saves you, no one can unsave you. Now praise the Lord, they are, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming. If you are not sure of where you are going, please come. Because you must live with that assurance of hope. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Regardless of who you are, don't look at your titles. Don't look at the course you are doing. Across before me, the world be Receive that coming as well. Anyone else? Oh, yes. Let's clap to the Lord. Let us clap to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because you see, if you are not sure, then you needed to be part of this. <laughs> hallelujah. So what we're going to do is to pray for these. Uh, to pray for these and then uh, now there could be a Nicodemus there. You, you are also supposed to pray with them. And those of you who are uh, listening or uh, worshiping with us in the comfort of your living home, uh, living rooms of your homes, you can also pray this prayer because Jesus is right there where you are. And uh, there is a young lady who is in the in the uh, chat. What is it called? Chat chat what? chat room, what is it called? Top chat. Yeah, she says she's uh, following from Russia. She says from, she's following from Russia. So wherever you are, you can invite Jesus in, in your heart. Let us pray. Please lift your hands. And repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for speaking to me and for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I now realize I am a sinner and Lord, I come to you to deliver me and to save me from my wandering, from my waywardness. I am coming home. Lord, deliver me from my lost condition. Today, as an act of my will, I open up the door of my life and I invite you in. Come, Lord Jesus, and save me. Wash me. Wash all my sins with the blood of Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. And Holy Spirit, fill me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Transform me into the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you for restoring hope in me. I can now confidently say that I possess that hope which does not disappoint. And so teach me your ways. Teach me how to walk with you and to walk in step with the Spirit of God. I renounce evil. I renounce Satan and all his ways. 
And today I declare that I'm a child of God. I am born again. I am saved. And I can also say I am nobody can unsave me. I am yours, Lord, irrevocably yours. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, Hallelujah. Is somebody happy? I want you to shout a big hallelujah. One, two, three, go. Amen. 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 The Bible says that when one sinner, when one sinner turns to the Lord, angels in heaven rejoice. Now, I don't know what is happening in heaven at the moment. Over all these, <laughs> there is holy chaos, the preacher has said. There is holy chaos in heaven. And we want to see a little bit of this as well. As we sing to the Lord, as we worship, and we bless the Lord for each one of you. Amen. Listen to what uh, uh, the same Paul says in Romans 4.18. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. In other words, Abraham believed against hope. Hope against hope. I think one version says, when all hope was gone, Abraham hoped. And, uh, and Job, in 13 verse 15, Job 13 15, this is what he said. And you know the afflictions that Job went through. He said, even though he slay me. In other words, even though he kills me, yet will I hope in him. So we have no other hope than what you have embraced. Amen. Please tell your neighbor uh, the words of this Kamale boy who works for Voice of America. Keep hope alive. Tell them again, keep hope alive. Uh, you remember, some of you remember Shaka Sali. He loves to say that. He says, keep hope, not pop. Keep hope alive. And so we bless the Lord for you and uh, the uh, Seb, Seb and Alex are going, where should, where should they go? Amen. To Kute, Tende, Reza, Yesu. Please follow. Uh, there's a tent where they're going to speak to you. And uh, if you, I hope you brought your phones and, uh, and bags. Praise the Lord. Let us clap to the Lord again. And let us appreciate the preacher for faithfully uh, preaching the gospel. And believe you me, we could not have found a better preacher for this day. So what we are going to do now, we, we are doing well with the time, by the way, and uh, uh, the food is being prepared. Now, we are going to give to the Lord uh, your offertory, thanksgiving offering, and uh, this choir, wonderful choir, I think this is Univoice, will be leading us in uh, songs of praise together with the Lugbara uh, uh, praise band. I think it's, uh, I like the way they play their instruments. Uh, so let us joyfully bring our gifts to God. Amen.
Praise the Lord. We are going direct to USA. That is the United States of Arua now. You can join us. Amen. The song says, Jesus is the way. We are going to sing it in our own dialect. Eh? Yeah, I know you will pay, you will catch up. Others will come. You will, we are all together. Not so. Are we different? We are all one. Hey. Also join us in our usual service, okay? Amen. Shall we pray for our uh, offer trip? King Glory, want to thank you so much for this that you have enabled each one of us to give as a sign of our sacrifice, King of Glory. We want to thank you so much for the way that you've always blessed the work of our hands. And therefore, Lord, we pray that you sanctify uh, this, our offertory, so that it adds a block on the service and your ministry in your vineyards. Father, we thank you, praise you. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. We shall keep standing, facing the altar, and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, on page five of our order of service. 
together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit and became man for our sake. In the fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, and spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. On page 7, brethren, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, great Father, living God supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior and giver, from a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom and revealing your will, dying and rising, reigning and remarking and remaking your people for yourself. Through him you have poured your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and, and, and life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, faithful and ancestors in all heaven, we proclaim your glorious name, forever praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your son who to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Power, your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded us through these gifts of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Touch it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. His body was broken for us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our Son of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world. 
the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from the dead, granting him great honor at your right hand, at your hand on high. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is alive forever. We are because he is. We are one body. We share one brand. And so brothers and sisters, draw near with faith. This is the feast of victory. The lamb was slain, has brand. So brothers and sisters, come and receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Feed on him with faith and thanksgiving.
face to face 11 